So we are still using Subaru wheel hubs at the moment, and that's kind of a carryover from my old design because we had we were using Subaru axles, so I had to use the Subaru stub or the Subaru hub. Now I built new 930 stubs to fit the Subaru hub, and that'll probably be okay. This stub shaft will actually be our weak point, technically. So that's easy to upgrade. I could put a GM bearing on here. They have a much bigger spline, and then I could actually buy off the shelf micro stub adapters or make another set, whatever needs to happen. But, you know, this is not a crazy high power buggy. This thing needs to make, I'd be happy with 100 horsepower to the tire, but I'll probably shoot for like 150, just to say I have it. Now it's important when you're measuring for axles that your alignment is set. So my alignment is already set. I did all those adjustments, uh, so my toe and camber are correct. So now we should be able to measure between our axle cups throughout the travel and determine what length axles we'll need. Once again, we got the laser level on and we're just shooting a line through the center of the hubs on the trans here. That way we can make sure our wheels are straight. But this is where the axles will be in their shortest and that's where we want to measure. So basically we're going to measure from the back of the cup to the back of the cup and that'll be our maximum axle length. However, you can't just have it perfect because things are going to flex, right? This motor is rubber mounted, so it can move a little. The trailing arms are going to flex. I'm sure the whole frame flexes. And what will happen is if, these, if the axle bottoms out in both of these cups, it's going to put a lot of force directly into the differential of the Subaru Trans, which is already very weak. So if you slap that thing too hard, you might chip the teeth on the ring gear or do other damage. So basically the, the goal here is to select the longest length we can that feels safe without compromising too much of our ability to extend the axle when the trailing arms come down here. So my measurements are shaking out as 25 inches of axle over here would give me a half inch of wiggle room. So then I dropped the trailing arm down 12 inches from that point where we originally measured. Now I have 28 inches from here to here. So that's three inches of plunge that I need to make happen out of these axles. I think that's gonna be a little tight, but we won't know until we try. I think the joints will do about an inch on their own. Let me measure that again. And now this is with the CV straight, so I'd imagine it's a little worse with it turned. So it looks like these joints safely plunge about one inch in the CV itself. So between the two, that gives me two inches of plunge. So we need three, how's that gonna work? Well, I think that's where we rely on the axle actually sliding in the splines here. We'll see when we order these aftermarket axles, they usually come with some pretty long splines. Then you measure how deep the cups are, we'll say conservatively three quarters of an inch there. So that gives us an extra inch and a half of axle shaft that can be sticking through the back of the CV and then pull out. So I think we're gonna be looking pretty good here. Uh, three inches of plunge on a 25 inch 930 should be no problem. I actually have a feeling we're gonna have more than that. It's a couple days later and we have some chromoly shafts to build axles with as well as some boot kits. Now first thing right off the bat, I learned something which I should have known so I bought these through Dan's Performance out in California. I actually bought all this stuff through them. Good dude. Uh, I called him and talked to him and got real answers. It was nice to talk to somebody that knows what they're talking about. So one thing I didn't know in my calculations is when you buy a chromoly axle shaft and you say you want it 25 inches, that's 25 inches end to end. That is not clip to clip. So that being said, uh, we know that I needed 25 inches to make this axle work clip to clip, which is actually a 26 inch axle modified. Unfortunately, those are out of stock and won't be in stock for a long time. So I had to buy 27 inch axles. So we're gonna be cutting quite a bit off of these. But in the meantime, I've been mocking up with a piece of PVC here that I drilled holes in at the clip to clip dimensions and I put cotter pins through it so it retains the CV star and then we threw our boots on. So now I have this mock up axle that we can trim and play with until we're happy. And I'm standing out here looking at this 
and that is at full bump. So that would be totally bottomed out there. That would that would leave me three inches of ground clearance. So three inches of ground clearance on a 30 inch tire, which actually measures 29. The tire is going to deform. You know, probably the frame is going to smack the ground. So we may not ever use all that travel, but it is available. I want to have a lot of travel. Uh, right now we're looking at, we're sitting at about 16 inches. I'd rather see 18. I could easily get that 18 by lowering the motor two inches. Unfortunately, that is a pretty large job that's going to involve me actually cutting my frame rails, building some mounts that come out around the transmission, working up front of the motor, the back of the motor, all that. So I'm not sure that the juice is worth the squeeze to get another two inches of down travel. Basically the problem becomes I run out of axle plunge on the downside here. I need a little more plunge out of it, but it's a little tight. I really want these things to be loose and floppy because if these trailing arms flex, which I believe they will be inclined to do because they're just so long and this tube is kind of springy, I don't want to ram this axle into the trans and break the ring and pinion. And I don't want it pulling the balls so far that it actually starts to tear up the boot retainer here. Um, because that, that is actually your limiting factor once you put these boots on like this. They do make boots that go over the CV where you won't retain the balls this way and you'll get a little more plunge out of a 930 that way. That is an option. So see how the splines are cut away in here? This is the spiral lock clip that will hold the axle in. That now drops into here a quarter inch. So I had CarTech bore these for me before they sent them. I only bought two, I already have two CVs, so I'll have to bore the other two on my own. But essentially this will give you, between the two CVs, another half inch of axle extension on the full droop side. So I think between that and being really smart about our axle lengths, we're gonna get everything we want without having to move the motor. And another problem we have here is the boot touches the upper part of the arm at ride height, not even full droop, it's even worse. So, thankful I didn't fully weld these out yet. We're gonna have to make a design change there. And two, these are bigger in real life than they look online. Uh, online, they look like these tiny little boots. Everybody runs them. Well, they're actually not that small. I got the brand new axle set up in the lathe on a live center here. We're moving our snap ring locations in to reach our targeted overall length. Now, I actually I ground a high-speed steel tool for cutting this, but it is not holding up well. I actually found it was better to mark it with the tool and then come in with a cutting wheel and grind that groove. This chromoly is pretty hard. It is knocking the edge off the high-speed steel very quickly. I don't have any carbide inserts that are that size, so I think that'll work. Got to flip this thing over, put the groove in the other side, and then we need to cut off the excess very nicely. I got these hacked off, put another center in them, I tested a spiral lock, all is good there, and we hit our length target spot on. So here's a demonstration on how an underboard or counterboard star would work. See how it allows the clip to pull clean into the joint? So that extra quarter inch per side I think is going to help us, or at least add a margin of safety. We got quite a bit of plunge available here. All right, so at arm's level, we have plenty of play here that I'm comfortable. We're not going to hammer an axle shaft into our fragile transmission. Don't know exactly how much that is, but it's a good bit. Now, fully compressed, we'll pick two inch, slide it the other way. We're now at two and almost five eighths. So that's over a half inch of free play in our worst case scenario. We ultimately bottom out down here. We still have plenty of play. 
but we are getting really close to our max axle angles. So let's uh, tons of plunge. We obviously look very good as well. We won't run out of angle in compression at all. Looks good. Nice and floppy. Here's how we look at full bump. That would give me three inches from my frame rail to the ground. So ideally you'd be hitting the bump stop then. We don't want to slap the frame rails on the ground, but we do want to use a lot of that travel if we can. So I'm seeing here between 60, 62 at my full droop, 78 at the full high. What is that, 16 inches of travel? That's fine. I'd like to see a smidge more, but without moving the transmission down, uh, we can't droop as far. I'm only able to get four to five inches of droop below my ride height. Will that be enough? I don't know. Uh, just We'll have, just have to try it and see. Um, we can always lower the trans another time and still retain the same axle length. So none of this is super permanent. All right, so at full bump, we do clear the trailing arm just barely, and that's okay. Um, because that's going to be, you know, you're never going to be there maybe once every every now and again. So if there's slight contact, we're not going to damage the boot. No clicking. Everything sounds great. Ride height. We look good, sound good as well. However, we are too close for comfort here. And then at full droop, we're going to see it even more. So... making one final modification to these cups. So I found a flaw in the design. Well, it's really my fault for not machining it out initially, but this lip here, in certain conditions, the axle shaft could be protruded into here. And uh, basically as the CV wants to articulate, the circlip area will snag on this. So I cut a chamfer in here so that way it glides off and pushes the axle back towards center. Something like this needs to happen, unfortunately. I'll have to extend this base plate, move this arm up to make clearance for the CV boot. All right, so that's what we're gonna end up with there. 100% penetration on a 3 8 plate. Little extension there. That should just get me the clearance I need to clear that boot. Got a whole hand worth of clearance now. That'll do it, boys. Got the other side axle grooved and cut. That's ready. Now I'm on to a different job here of trying to counterbore these stars. I only bought two pre-counterboard. I'm gonna to have to counterbore two myself. And with how hard this material is, I'm a little worried about it. It's hard to grip this thing in a chuck because it's such a weird shape. Uh, so I'm thinking it's better in a vise because it fits decent this way and we'll try to bore it with the mill. Right, guys there it is axles are complete trailing arms are modified for clearance i have an extra you know inch and a half of droop i could potentially allow and then they could go up further but there becomes a point where would you rather bottom out or hit the frame on the ground i'm playing it conservative and keeping three or four inches of clearance there so we're going to call it 16 inches could be 20 if you wanted to call it that but i'm not here to uh win internet arguments. This was a big move for the buggy. Uh, getting solid axles on this thing has been the Achilles heel of this unit. I think these are going to work. I'm almost 99% sure these are going to work flawlessly. At least I'm hoping so. You know, utilizing 
930 CV joints, chromoly inners, chromoly 28 spline shaft, some MP boots, our custom flanges on the Subaru wheel bearing and the Subaru trans. I don't see any reason this will give us trouble. But yeah, most of the stuff in this video is not really even buggy specific. So like next time my BMW needs axles, I'm just gonna build them myself. These are fairly universal, you could say. Um, lots of German cars run this inner CV joint. If you wanted to make custom axles for an M3, the only proprietary move would be building the outer flange just like we did here, but the rest of it all bolt together. Now it's still not really cheap. You're gonna be looking at probably 350 bucks for a pair of shafts. Uh, that's if you go Chinese. If you go name brand, you're probably looking closer to 550 or 600. And then each CV joint is 100 bucks. Uh, the boot kits are probably $45 each. So really it's gonna cost you, uh, it's still $1,000 to build a set of axles. What I think is really nice about these is how easy they are to rebuild, how easy it is to bring a spare CV with you. You can just slide it in your toolbox, doesn't take up much space. You could already have it set up, packed with grease and everything. If you were to have a problem, pull over on the side of the trail, six bolts, throw the old CV off, throw the new CV on, bolt it back on, and you're driving home. Uh, with this 100 and whatever horsepower engine, I don't think we're ever going to break an axle shaft. Absolutely not. So should be good this should be the solution we're looking for so now i have a lot of welding left to do i need to get these trailing arms fully welded out now that we know everything clears and fits as it should i'll give it one last alignment check before i do that because i did have to move that upper link which did influence the camber so i had to adjust that on the fly so I want to check the toe, make sure that's still dialed, but otherwise I'm really happy with the way this came out. You know, everything's a compromise. So if you want long travel, you need long axles. If you need long axles, you need a wider track width. So uh, I guess I need these side-by-sides to keep getting wider every year and blaze the trail for me, but 72 inches shouldn't be too much of a problem. Upcoming, we'll be figuring out new coilovers, and then we need to start building a new cage for the top of this because well, I've said it in other videos, but this cage sucks. Also, let me know what your favorite CV grease is. You know, when they buy the boots, they come with this pack of grease. Uh, I know other people in the desert racing scene have more of a blend. They mix two types of greases together or whatever. They find it really works well with CVs. I haven't ordered any grease yet. I'm open to suggestions on that. So if you have any experience with that, I'd love to hear it. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about this down in the comments. As always, thanks for watching Spank Ranch Garage. I'll see you next time.